The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus continues his teaching uh, from the mountaintop. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its, sub its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Maybe it happens for you. There are times when I hear the story or I hear somebody telling about a situation and I find myself thinking, there has to be more going on here. Sometimes it's in news accounts where as you listen to the news account, you find yourself thinking, really? Is that all? Maybe it's in other accounts that others are telling you. This past week, I found myself watching uh, the accounts in the newspaper of a trial to our east. It is a trial of a, a young woman who was a server in a bar who provided alcohol to underage drinkers. And as I read the news article, I found myself thinking, there has to be more going on. In the midst of that article, it talked about ways in which at that same bar, at that same night, there was a group of some law enforcement officials. <laughs> and indeed, those two young men who were underage drinkers joined their party and bought a round for them. And then at a later date, or a little bit later in the evening, those law enforcement officials returned the favor. It turns out, as, as the defense for this young woman pointed out, there were no fewer than five people who had, over the course of the previous 24 hours, provided alcohol for these young drinkers. But there was only one being charged. It raises a question. It raises a question in my mind about the way in which we apply the law. That oftentimes it is so easy when we're looking at those folks to want the law to be applied strictly and completely. But you know, there are circumstances, and we all find ourselves in them, where we say, well, you know, there's good reason to relax it a little bit, or to adjust it a little bit, or to bend it a little bit. Now, it's possible that among us there are some who never do such a thing, at least until we get onto the highway, huh? Today we hear Jesus talking about salt and light and living into the law. 
And as Jesus talks about the law, he says, you know, some of you may be getting the wrong idea. You may be getting the wrong idea. And so for some of you, you're thinking that I have come to abolish the law, to set the law aside, that the law will no longer apply. But I tell you, I came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And then he goes on and he talks about those who teach <laughs> and consequences. In this reading, there's a little bit of a glimpse why for pastors who get up, who dare to get up and preach and who teach, we do it with a certain amount of fear and trembling. There are consequences. But Jesus comes and he stands before his disciples, or he's probably sitting actually on that mountainside, and he says, I came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And then the question starts to emerge, but what law, what commandment is it that he's talking about? Now we could go back to the beginning of his teaching, and indeed we'll end up there, but I'm going to suggest that we got a glimpse of it when we heard Isaiah proclaimed in our midst. Isaiah, in, in this part of Isaiah's words to the people of Israel, they are a people who have been in exile for a long time, decades, generations. They have been in exile, and many of them are thinking, why is it that we do all these things? God doesn't listen to us anyway. And the Lord responds by saying, yeah, but when you're doing those things, when you are praying and when you're fasting and when you're making sacrifices, you're looking out for what you're going to get out of it. That's not the kind of sacrifice that I want. That's not the kind of fast that I want. What the Lord then says, he goes on to say, is that the kind of fast that I want is one where you loose the bonds of injustice, where there is injustice being per perpetrated, where there is oppression. You need to be agents of bringing new life and freedom. The fast that I want is that where there are hungry people, you feed them. Where there are the homeless poor, you give them shelter. Where there are people who are naked or in need of clothing, you clothe them. In short, what God calls for, what the Lord calls for, is a commandment of love. Love and compassion that reaches out and cares for our neighbors as an expression of our love for God. Now we heard some of that before. Jesus spoke about it as he sat down and began the Sermon on the Mount. And where did he start that sermon? He started out by announcing blessings. And in that culture, kind of like our culture, people will look at the people who have a lot and say, ooh, aren't they blessed? But Jesus doesn't announce blessings for the ones who have a lot. What Jesus does is he turns it all upside down. And he says, look, those who are powerless to do anything for themselves are the ones who receive blessing. And the ones who claim solidarity and work to break the bonds of that injustice and oppression and all that weighs those powerless ones down, they are blessed. And oh, by the way, we heard this last week. It's a recap of that sermon. Oh, by the way, those who claim solidarity with those folks will generally experience, because the, the society doesn't particularly like things going that way. So those who claim that solidarity, who work for justice, who work for the needs of those who are on the margins in any way, those people will find themselves marginalized. It's after that that Jesus says to those who are gathered, that Jesus says to you and I today, you are the salt of the earth. Now in 21st century terms, at least the Food Channel tells me, that I need to put food on, uh, salt on things 
so that it enhances the flavor, makes it brighter, brings the flavor out. But in the first century, salt was about preserving things. It was about reducing or slowing the process of rot and decay. But there's more. And we would know about this. But in the, in the courtyard of, of a person's house, there was a earthen oven. In fact, it was called the earth. And next to it was a dung pile. And in that day, they used the dung to fuel that oven. They salted the dung with a cake of salt. And that salt helped that fuel burn hotter. So you got a better fire. You are the salt of the earth. You're the salt that helps the fire of God's love burn hotter in the world, in the earth. You're the ones who help that to happen. And of course, at some point, that salt cake that they put over that dung pile would quit working quite so well. It lost its saltiness. It was spent, and it wasn't worth anything. You are the salt of the earth. You are the ones who change the lives of those you touch. You're the one who brings newness to be. And then he goes on and says, you are the light of the world. Nobody in those days, the way that they extinguished the lamp was to put a bushel over the top of it so that you didn't get all that oil smoke all over your house. Nobody lights a candle so that they can put it out right away. But instead, when we light a lamp, we put it up on a lampstand so that it gives light to everyone in the household. You are the light of the world. You are called to bring light into people's lives. You are called to work to ensure that all those who would so easily see themselves as discounted, marginalized, and unacceptable know the truth of God's love. And we do that not just by being in here, but in the way we live our lives out there in the world, meeting people where they are, showing them the reality of God's love. And indeed, when we do that, when we live in such a way that God's love for all people, God's love particularly for those who are sure that they are not worthy of that love, then we are fulfilling the law. Jesus has already fulfilled the law in his life and in his death and his teaching. He has already been light in our world. He has already been the salt of our earth. And he is commissioning each and every one of us to be salt, to be light, and to be fulfillers of the law. For indeed, let your light so shine before others so that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. <laughs>